So if you can't see this while you're welding, then maybe this is the reason that you're struggling. So if you are struggling to see your welds or you just generally want to improve your welding, I'm gonna share with you four tips that helped me and hopefully they can help you guys. And these are four simple tips. Good lighting, good body position, torch angle, and the welding helmet that you are using. Let me explain. So tip number one, good lighting. You want a well-lit work area around the place where you're going to be welding. And this is gonna give you the best chance of seeing and positioning to start the welding process. Now, personally, I use an articulating desk lamp around where I weld, but not everybody is welding at a welding table. Sometimes you're having to work in cl uh, small closed dark areas, or maybe even underneath a vehicle if you're doing exhaust repairs. In that case, you can use yourself a torch or maybe a workshop light. Number two is body position. You wanna position yourself so that you are as comfortable as possible, especially for TIG welding, and that your arms or your body or your fixture or even your part don't block the view of where you are welding and where you're trying to weld to, so that you can see the line or the seam that you are actually welding up and you can anticipate what is coming up in the process. Number three is the torch angle. You wanna aim the torch so that you can see the tip of the tungsten if you are, let's for argument's sake, say you TIG welding. You don't wanna have the torch straight up or dragging it for whatever reason and you can't actually see the puddle that you are busy welding. And then number four, this is probably the most important one, none of the above matters if you can't see through the welding helmet that you are trying to use. And that is what I wanna focus on today. So look how easy you can see the weld puddle and the arc zone in this clip compared to the next clip coming up. And this is what I mean when I say being able to see properly makes a world of difference. At least it does for me. So having a good helmet, preferably the best quality helmet that you can afford that has all of the correct safety certification so that your eyes are well protected. Remember, you only get one set of eyes in your lifetime and you wanna keep the helmet well maintained. So the first helmet that we were looking through is the Titan Diamond Welding Helmet. And I was given this helmet to test. And I'm gonna tell you all the things that I like about the helmet and the things that you need to be aware of when it comes to this helmet specifically. So hopefully what I talk about today might give you guys some things to think about when you are shopping around and trying to choose between the various brands and types of helmets in the market. Specifically, if you are trying to buy your first helmet or maybe even if you're upgrading an existing welding helmet. Now, full disclosure, Unique Welding did send this helmet to me a couple of months ago to try out. They didn't ask me to make a video, but I thought I would take this opportunity to actually make a video and do a bit of a comparison to show you what's on the market. Now, although I guess they were also hoping that I would make a video because they did say I should feel free to test and compare it against the other leading brands like ESAB and Optrel, which must mean they're pretty confident in their product because those are well-known top tier brands. They also get absolutely no say in this video. They don't get to see it before it is published. Surprise, <laughs> I don't actually have any ESAB and Optrel helmets to compare, but I do have some other ones uh, that we can make reference to. <laughs> and of course, I'm gonna tell you what I didn't like about the product. So I took it out the box, chucked it on my head and did a bit of welding for a couple of hours. And let me tell you, it is really, really nice. So I don't know, Unique Welding, if you guys were expecting this helmet back once I'm done with it, but I've kind of decided to conduct some, let's say, uh, lifetime endurance testing. So you're probably not gonna get it back. <laughs> so right off the bat, my initial thoughts are that after having welded with a helmet for a few hours and also having the previous generation Thermomax helmet and the older Transarc helmet as a reference, my thoughts are this. The new Titan Diamond helmet has a very clear lens in both the dark and the light state. So when it's in the light state, it's almost like you are looking through nothing at all, like you're looking through a clear piece of glass. Of course, there is still a lens there and it is actually still shade level two, but it is really, really easy to look through. I'll give you a good example of this. I've got just some basic lighting in my workshop and when I load parts and I need to weld a lot of small parts, I load them into the fixture, I weld it, I take the part out, then I load the next lot of parts into the fixture and I weld it up. I don't need to raise the hood each time. So this speeds up the process and makes it a lot more efficient and you're able to do this because you can see so easily in the light state. When it's in the dark state, the True Vision color tech they've got implemented in this ADF is also actually very impressive. Now you can really see very clearly when you are welding. So now, Myself coming from the original auto darkening, these budget helmets, if you will, and not knowing any better, I used those and they were fine. But then I started using these newer tech, new helmets. Would I ever go back? 
absolutely no chance at all. And I don't think you guys would either. Actually, I think do yourself a favor. If you haven't welded through one of these uh, uh, True Vision or True Color helmets before, go find somebody that has one. Hopefully they let you try it out and then you can experience firsthand how much better welding like this is. Another thing I like is that the viewing window is really large and this makes it really useful to use. So you can easily see ahead to where you are going. You're not just focused around the immediate welding area or the arc zone. And this is also one of my specific use cases, but doing repetitive work like I just explained, uh, you don't have to lift the hood in order to see what's happening around you and to unload welded parts and to load loose parts into a fixture to carry on welding. There's no need to raise the hood because you can just see so clearly all around you. Next up is the headgear and specifically the plastic clip or the indent when folding the helmet up. It's kind of an easy clipping action. You don't need to rip your head off to get the helmet or the hood to unclip and drop down. It only needs a small bump to drop the hood. Now, this likely will wear over time and it will get a little bit easier to clip if you're using the helmet all day, every day, but that's to be expected. And if it does eventually wear, it's not a problem. The entire headgear to replace it, you just order it, they've got it available. It's 235 Rand, really not a lot of money. Now you might say 235 Rand, geez, you could almost buy <laughs> a budget welding helmet for that from like a local supply shop. <laughs> Let's not even have that conversation. That is like comparing riding a bicycle to riding in a Ferrari. The next thing is also about the headgear and specifically the rubber pad that grips behind your head. It is nice and large, it's comfortable and it is really grippy uh, if you like that type of grip feel. But it also means that uh, if you're used to sliding your helmet on and off very easily or quickly, it does grip a little bit and pull your hair. It's not actually really a problem, it's just not my preference. And luckily it's quite easy to fix, you just unclip the rubber pad in like two seconds. The helmet is also nice and light and comfortable. It's got a dual headband, which I kind of find more comfortable than the single headband on my other helmets. And the ratcheting back strap has got quite a big knob at the back and it's quite easy to adjust with gloves on. You just turn it clockwise to tighten the strap and you turn it anti-clockwise to loosen the strap. I did also notice that on this new Titan helmet, the hood is a little bit more flexible than on the previous generation helmets. And that is probably because the plastic that they've made the hood out of is a little bit thinner. It's about 1.75 millimeters thick as opposed to the previous models that were about two millimeters thick. Now, I guess they've done this to try and save on weight because you know the lighter the helmet, the more comfortable it'll be to use over a long period of time. But this also might be advantageous if you drop the helmet, it is more flexible, it is more likely to absorb the shock and probably less likely or less prone to cracking or damaging the expensive filter that is inside. Another thing to consider when you're buying a helmet, and this is probably somewhat underrated and not often thought about, is buying replacement front lenses. Now I've already got my pack of 10 front lenses. These are 40 Rand each, so they're really not that expensive. But having a nice, clean, unscratched front lens goes a long way to seeing clearly through the welding helmet. And you don't actually realize I mean, these things are consumable. They get scratched up every time you wipe off a bit of dust that kind of collects in your workshop. Every time you wipe it off, it puts micro scratches into the plastic. And even though you're looking through the helmet when it is in its light state and it looks really clear, as soon as the helmet goes into the dark state and you've got this very intense small uh, point of light shining into the helmet, the light gets diffused and you get this kind of mushy look and then you wonder, you know, this helmet is not looking so good. Or <laughs> generally always it's the front screen and it needs to be replaced. Now before I get to telling you about what I don't really like about the helmet, let's have a quick look at some of the specs and features. Most welding helmets run off a solar cell and this helmet is no different. In fact, it's got two solar cells, one above and one below the filter screen. And it runs on twin batteries, two CR2032s. And in order to replace these batteries, you need to take out the filter, remove it from the hood in order to gain access to the batteries. It also doesn't have any external controls compared to say the previous generation, which had the shade setting on the side. Now I prefer to have the shade setting inside the helmet because previously when I have used those helmets, I have sometimes bumped the sort of shade dial setting a few times, and then you end up making yourself as blind as a welder's dog. And that is not a great scenario to be in. Also, when it comes to arc sensors, most helmets have got two arc sensors. This helmet has got four arc sensors. So if you are welding in kind of a peculiar position and you 
tend to block, let's say, two of the sensors. You're not going to get arc flashed because the other two are still visible and working. Also, uh, all these ADF uh, welding helmets have hopefully a welding mode. Generally, they've got shades 9 to 13, and this helmet is no different. Its welding mode has got shades 9 to 13. It's also got a cutting mode with shades 5 to 8. Now, I can't really test this because I don't have a plasma cutter to test it. And it has also got a grinding mode. Now, not all helmets have got this grinding mode. And it, it uses shade 2. Just generally, when you are looking through the helmet, that's what you see in the grinding mode. Now, believe it or not, I'm actually only about three grinding discs away from being a professional welder. So, if you are like me, this is maybe a mode that you might find handy when you need to just like knock down a bit of a dodgy weld that you made. You don't have to lift the hood. You can just pick up a, a grinder and grind it away. But just keep in mind that if you do grind and then you get sort of sparks and, and stuff landing on the, sh on the sheet or on the screen, it's gonna damage the screen and make it less visible to see through. It's also got sensitivity control settings from one to six. So this is basically how easily it is triggered to change from the light to the dark state. And it's got a delay control setting from 0 0.1 seconds to 0 0.9 seconds. And this is basically how quickly it changes from the dark state to the light state after you have finished welding. There are also a couple of other compliance and application specs I'll just chuck those up on screen now. You can just pause the video if you want to read through those. Now, what don't I like about the helmet? Well, it doesn't seem like the helmet turns off at all, or at least there is no on off switch and the screen on the back of the, the filter stays on all the time. Now, maybe it's actually not an issue, but my mind just kind of tells me mm, the batteries might run down. But I suppose uh, only time will tell and I'll have to test this over the next couple of months. If the batteries only last two months, eh, not really good enough, but if they last a year, I think that's very reasonable. Also, because the helmet doesn't turn off, the filter will darken each time it picks up, say, flashing or grinding in the workshop. Previously, with my, with my other helmet, it also didn't turn off, and it wasn't really a problem. I didn't notice any batteries running flat, but just keep in mind, depending on what environment you are in, you know, your, your mileage may vary. Now maybe there is a workaround, you could possibly set the sensitivity to the lowest setting when you're finished the helmet. Are we really gonna do this? Nah, probably not. Another workaround maybe, set to the grind, or set the helmet to the grinding function when you're finished using it so that it doesn't auto darken. Also not gonna work because somewhere within a 24 hour period, I did try this, it defaults back to the weld function. And also um, IR light, like uh, infrared light, will also trigger the dark mode to come on. So if you've hung your, um, your helmet on a bottle, like kind of in the background there, you might find that, I, I don't know, your scenario or your workshop may be different. I don't know what's there, but maybe there is something there that can trigger that lens um, to go to jump between light and dark state all the time and then your your battery eventually runs flat. This helmet doesn't come with a storage bag. Well, at least mine didn't. This is not really a deal breaker, but it is something that you may want to consider using if your helmet comes with it or if it doesn't come with it, maybe getting one. Why do I consider this kind of a don't like item? Because if you end up hanging your helmet over a bottle like you can see behind me here, because, you know, let's face it, a lot of us do it because it's convenient. The lens it tends to pick up a lot of dust because our workshop is a dusty environment. And then when you come to using your helmet, you take it off, you've got to wipe off the lens each time. And every time you wipe off the lens, it gets more and more scratched. And then you've got to replace the lens more frequently. So <laughs> I suppose moral, moral of the story is pop it into the bag if you've got one, then hang it on your bottle, or maybe just store it in a cupboard. If the grinding mode on a welding helmet is something that you intend using often, it might be quite convenient to get a helmet that has the grind mode function button on the outside to to enable and disable that function. This helmet doesn't have any external buttons. To enable the grinding mode, you need to raise the hood uh, and then push the button to change it over to the grind function and then lower the hood once again and then continue to grind. It's not really a problem for me, but if this is something that you need to do, just keep that in mind. The warning label also says the helmet is not to be used for any overhead welding, so keep that in mind if that's the type of welding that you need to do. And the label also says the recommended use period for the helmet is around three years, but it's not to be used longer than five years, so also keep that in mind. So overall, this is a premium professional helmet which you pay a fair amount of money for, so you would expect it to perform well. And so far, I'm actually really happy with it, very pleased with it, and uh, 
I don't think I'm going to be going back to some of the older helmets that I've got. Practically speaking, though, if you are only going to weld three or four times a year, you probably don't need to buy one of these helmets. Unless you can afford it, then absolutely go ahead because it is great. Um, just pick up a middle-of-the-road helmet and you'll be perfectly fine. However, if you are going to be regularly welding with it or are a keen hobbyist, it's definitely worth looking at. So how long is this helmet going to last? Well, I've only had it a few weeks, so your guess is as good as mine, but at least it does come with a 12-month warranty. Hopefully, it's going to last much, much longer than that. Now, as with many of these uh, types of things, this video is just a, a very quick look at what's available and what might help you guys. But definitely go out, do your own research, make comparisons between the different products and the different techniques, and see what's going to work best for your specific case and your specific scenario. Lastly, if I do end up getting any discount codes for any of these helmets or any other supplies, or if there's anything I forgot to mention, I will leave it in the description or maybe at the first comment in the comment section to so go and check that out. That said, hopefully you found the video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, leave us a comment, let us know what you think. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time. Cheers.